Um, <coughs> by the end of my short speech, I hope to demonstrate that what Barbados is experiencing has nothing to do with any international recession. Alright? It's purely a matter of mismanagement. And more than that, the legacy, yeah, the legacy of David Thompson will be one, will be one that will soon be the final Barbados as perhaps <coughs> the greatest damage ever done, and you mark my word, the Barbados economy. We have had some pretty good governments over the years, when it comes to management. <laughs> but you see this thing here? Yes. Now you can ask people so far, I might bring it along just as evidence. This is Central Bank's information, this is not mine. Up until 2007, every government in Barbados, except on four occasions, made sure, like the household, that it had enough income to pay its bills. Since 2007, and it's not coincidental, this government has not had enough income to pay the wages and salaries of the public servants of Barbados. And therefore it's had to borrow. Now, the evidence is very much here. In 2007, when the Winaf administration left office at the beginning of 2008, we have a surplus of $150 million after we paid wages and salaries, buy goods and services, pay utility bills, all these other things. And this is consistent with what a government of Barbados does since independence. However, by the end of 2008, that surplus became a deficit of $121 million. Now understand what you're saying. If this is zero here where I am, that is $115 million there by Sands, and beyond this wall is a hundred minus $121 million. So in one year, this administration presided over a government that in one year turned around a situation by $236 million in one year. This is because of Thompson, man, not anybody to do this. This is not anything to do with any international recession. In fact, when, when did the international recession start? When did it start? So in, in one year, 12 months, that was turned around. By the following year, 2009, that deficit of 121 became 450 million. At the end of last year, that deficit became 535 million dollars. So, since 2007, when we had as a good government, a government that knew what it was doing, we have moved the connecting money, we have moved the payments, <laughs> we have moved from a deficit of surplus of $150 million to a deficit of $525 million, meaning, meaning that in less than four years, in fact three years, we were, this administration has managed Barbados to such an extent that it now has to borrow money, $650 million more, to even finance the payment of civil service. 
right? So we are in trouble. The only thing that is saving Barbados from the end is the fact that the last administration left a lot of reserves, foreign reserves. And the thing about it is that a country, if it does not have foreign exchange, will stop because what we spend, more than 60% of it goes out to buy imports. So you have to have foreign reserves. Now the private sector, once they are comfortable getting their goods and services, they tend not to react. They reacted to Sandy in the early 1990s. But the fiscal condition here in Barbados, as I speak to you, is worse than it was in the early 1990s. The savior is that we still have some reserves, some foreign exchange left to keep us going for the time being. So what has happened? What has really happened? Bad management on the part of this administration. Now, in the 2008 election, you as well as I would have heard the current leader of the Barbados Bay Party talk about the pending recession. Going out with bold enough in the last, don't mind that. Going <laughs> out with bold enough in the last election, I understand. In the last election, to speak to the issue of a coming recession before it happened. You all can talk? After I On this street. But you have a bunch of fellows now that pretended. Well, the fellow that I taught a little economics. That they move. Where's his name? Esther. Well, Esther, no. I'll say no. Esther is a fool. You're the one with Terry. I'll say Esther is a fool. Then there's a fellow no trying to pretend that he understands economics. But he's a half of a character. But he is now, and let me explain to you what's happening in Barbados. About a month ago, in fact, two Saturdays ago. We held a press conference at the opposition office. Sure. It was arguably one of the best organized press conferences that I've ever been. <laughs> the content was horrible. It started off with Kerry. Now, the Minister of Finance heard that the opposition was holding a press conference and got on his bicycle and went to each and every media house that same Saturday morning. The Sunday Sun gave the impression that the opposition was responding to what Sigma said. But Sigma said what he said after we spoke. So unless Unless I am um, a member now of Star Trek, <laughs> where you have the capacity to go forward into the future and come back, then I don't understand how the opposition could have been responding to something that was said after the opposition spoke. But that is all, so we gotta be careful. But there's a mission, there's a very big mission here. And the mission really is this. The mission is to keep Oinapa from becoming the next president. <laughs> Believe what I tell you, because as it happens out there, horses are picked before. And then the environment is created to allow the horses to win. And then there may be another individual who is supposed to come second with the intention that his day will come. So horses were picked a long time ago in this new race. So once a decision was taken to change the leadership of the party, this horse does not appear to be the horse that certain elements want. 
So what you are seeing now is, and, and I, you know I had the experience. So I can sleep freely. And by the way, I'm old enough to sleep freely anytime, anywhere, any place, anywhere. So what is happening now is an intention. You see, once you become your own man in Barbados, to speak your own mind based on the evidence before you, but it does not satisfy certain elements. You can anticipate and expect this kind of reaction. So last weekend, my friends, after the current minister of finance said that there was a record level of arrivals in January in tourism, we said that we will know if the foreign reserves of Barbados perform commensurate with the arrivals. Now we then discovered that whether they perform commensurate with the reserves, that for the first time, for the first time in this country, foreign reserve fell by $60 million in January of this year. Now why is that important? Because this is supposed to be the height of the winter season. And therefore, what happens is this. The central bank relies on the commercial banks who are the ones involved in meeting the public to sell the central bank foreign exchange during this period because there's an excess of foreign exchange resulting from tourism. If during your peak period there's not an excess of foreign reserves or US money, it means that tourism has underperformed and underperformed badly. It cannot be the case that the dog's prison is responsible. It is ignorance. It is madness. And listen to me. If the dog's payment was the first payment ever made in January this year, it could be held responsible True. for the falling reserves. True. But my friends, you have a mortgage. You have a car. If you took out your car three years ago, and for some reason this year, you're unable to pay the installment, can you blame the car? No. You have accounted for it in your budgeting. It is part of your expected obligations, so it cannot be blamed. So the same way in which you can't blame the prison, as was done even by the central bank. Don't forget, because this thing that you're seeing in Barbados is, I want you to be careful and to understand what's happening. There's an institutional arrangement. Even the central bank that has been the most reliable of institutions over the years. Started off by saying to Barbadians that the dog's prison will cost over $700 million. And here how it does it. It takes all the repayments over all the years and goes 20 years hence to value the prison in today's dollars. So therefore, all of your houses will be worth what you would have repaid over the 20 or 25 years. So therefore, all of us have million dollar houses. 